My very first YouTube post was me trimming out this bay window. Now that I have a few more videos under my belt, I wanted to take another crack at a similar project. This bay of windows in our master bedroom doesn't have any trim and the stool is made of this dated composite material. I think it's time for an update. To continue the theme that we've got going on the first floor, I'm using this really thick and elegant RB3 molding for the window casing and apron. I start by removing the old composite stool which comes off easily with a crowbar and cutting the caulk with a utility knife reduces drywall repair. I measure for the new window stool and write down multiple measurements to reduce my trips up and down the stairs at my house. I cut a lot of molding so I have these pop-up shelves which stabilize long and wobbly trim pieces rather nicely. I transfer the window measurements to the new stool and as a firm believer in measure twice cut once I double check my measurements and make any adjustments before busting out the jigsaw. I make the necessary relief cuts and give myself a little grace here because the window openings are far from square. I did my best but at the end of the day a little bit of caulk and paint goes a long way. I accounted for the width of the new casing on the ends of the stool and created a nice looking return by joining two pieces each cut at 45 degrees. CA glue is a huge time saver with this step and after a quick sand the stool is ready to install. I secure the new stool with construction adhesive and 2.5 inch 18 gauge brads. This battery powered nailer makes interior work so much more convenient because my compressor sounds like the Falcon Heavy blasting off. Next I made the apron and used the same technique to create the return with two 45s. This gives the molding that professional look we're going for. I also like to give a light sanding to any pre-primed boards to clean up any bumps or imperfections. I then installed the apron using the same brads and secured it both to the studs in the wall and from the top of the stool. Now that the stool was installed I could move on to the casing. I used a piece of scrap to mark the layout and get a more precise measurement. I took care to measure both sides and I'm glad I did because they were off by about a quarter of an inch. These windows sit back in the wall about three inches and are just drywalled in. A lot of builder grade brick homes like this one have this style and it doesn't make sense for me to frame out each opening. Call me lazy but after paint it won't bother us and I don't think the next owners will even notice. The casing on the top of the windows goes on the same way and you'll notice that I leaved a quarter inch reveal all the way around which I think helps set the trim off just so. This was a good time to break for lunch because the next part is this arch which is something I've never tackled before. I ordered this product from FlexibleMillwork.com which has a very easy ordering process and I'll link to their website in the description. If you follow me on Instagram you know I covered this process in detail in my stories. As you can imagine, a flexible arch is not the easiest thing in the world to measure and cut, so I used the shade to make a cardboard template of the window. The arch doesn't have a flat side to reference, so I used a scrap with a 45 degree cut to mark my line instead of a square. Not having a flat side to put against the fence also made it pretty challenging to cut on the miter saw, so I took my time and slowly moved the piece with the blade, following the line I scribed. I'm sure there's a better way to do this, so let me know in the comments what I should do next time. With one side cut, I manipulated the molding and temporarily tacked it in place to get a very precise measurement on the other side. I then removed the piece, cut the other side, and installed it with CA glue on the joints and construction adhesive on the back. I then nailed everything off, ensuring to keep a consistent quarter inch reveal throughout. Now that the stool, outside casing, and archway were installed, I moved on to the fluted columns that help make this bay look like a single unit. If you want to be highfalutin, I think the correct term for this part is called the entablature. It's basically a 9 inch block of wood that has some base cap and cove molding wrapped around the top and bottom. One might call this part the capital and cornice. I don't know, somebody please educate me in the comments. If you can't tell by now, CA glue is probably my favorite tool in the shop. I literally use it at some point on every project and it makes my life so much easier. I cut the fluted molding using my ingenious pop-out shelves, lightly sanding each piece before heading back upstairs. Finally, I installed the columns, and that just about wraps up this video. I'll spare you the caulking and painting details, but if you're interested, I'll link to my Caulk Like a Pro video in the upper right-hand corner. 
This trimmed out window makes a tremendous difference in the look and feel of our master bedroom. I have more projects like this to do, so if you want to follow along, please hit that like and subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching.